Hello, Debbie here. Welcome back to Barossa Valley Crafts. Today I'm going to show you how to make a card using some dies I got from Craft Zone, which is in Australia. So I'll add a link in the description to Craft Zone if you would like to look at these dies or anything else they sell. And so using these dies, I have made this card. So a lot of the time, you look at a card or you want to make a card but you don't have the papers that you would like to match it so we're going to create this background using distress oxides and then we're going to attach all the little die cuts to make the card so let me show you how i've done this so i'm using distress oxides i love these for blending with and these are also available at craft zone um, so I'll just show you how I've done it. So to start off with, we're using squeezed lemonade. So when you're blending, just start lightly because you can always add the colour. If you put on too much, it's very hard to move it around and um, remove it if you've got too much. So we're just starting with this one. So this will be the bottom of the sunset or sunrise. And being it's Australia Day here in Australia today, it's very fitting to be making a card for a barbecue today. <laughs> Not that it's going live on Australia Day. Okay, so now we're going to carved pumpkin. You don't need to use these colors I'm using. It's a matter of just working out which colours will blend well together to suit the effect that you want. So we'll just do that and then just coming back with the previous colour just to try and blend them in a bit more. And then we'll go to the next colour. So the next one I'm using is Barn Door Red. Um, so that's fairly juicy that one so we'll start off the paper off the card so we don't get too big a blob to start with just blend it I like these brushes for blending with when I first started I used to use the foam pad with the um, blending tool but you know, I found these brushes tend to blend a lot better and they're a nice soft bristled brush for blending so I'm just going back between the car pumpkin and the barn door just to get the blend in. I'll make that one a little bit more redder. So I'll just add a bit more colour. And come back with the carved pumpkin to blend those two a bit. Okay, now we'll go to the next colour, which is chipped sapphire. Now, this is a fairly dry pad, this one, so it's getting old. <laughs> so I'll just blend that one in. So most of the time I am doing a circular motion, but every now and then I'm just going back and forth just to try and smooth it out a bit. So we'll come back with barn door to try and... Oh, whoops, I picked up a wrong colour there somewhere. Just blend those two together. So that's the base of the card. So that's our background. So what I'm going to do now is I've just got some plain water and a fan brush. So I'm just going to pick up some water in my brush and I'm just going to splatter it around the card. Now you don't have to do this effect if you don't want to. The water will react with the oxides and it will bleach it. So leave it on there for a little bit and then just pop some paper over it and lift that off and that will give you that hatchy look. Now I'm going to tear off a piece of my paper to make some hills. So I'm just going to tear a piece off here. And then, 
So as you'll see on here, I've got a bit of a hill, just so we ground the barbecue to sit on something rather than having it looking like it's floating in midair. So I don't want too big a hill because I don't want to cover too much of the background. So I'm just going to do a little hill or a little bit of ground. And I'm going to use Versafine Clear Twilight for this part, only because I like the colour. So just flicking downwards. And there we go, we have a bit of ground. Now if you wanted to, you could put hills in the background as well. Actually, let's do that. Just do a little bit of hill in the background. Just when you're doing it in the background, it, it'll be just a bit lighter so it looks like it's in the distance. So there we go. Just gives it so just something to compare it to when we finish this one. Okay, so now we're going to stick all our little barbecue bits and pieces on. You can just get them. So I'm assuming this is like meant to be the bag that contains the coals that you put onto your barbecue. So we'll pop that down in the corner. Okay, so I'm using um, Couture Creations All Purpose Art Glue for this. You can use any glue you like, really, but I just, the reason I grabbed this is because I've got the fine tip on it, which makes it good to get in fine areas. And now we'll just add the barbecue. While I'm popping all this together, um, I'll just let you know that um, I do have a um, couple of Facebook groups. One's called Barossa Valley Crafts. The other one is called Card Making for Beginners and Beyond. And uh, if you'd like to join, you're more than welcome to come and share your creations with us. We're not limited to brands, so you can use any brand. Yeah, let's see, we'll have the barbecue lid open. So I'll add the link into the comments, and if you'd like to join, you're more than welcome to come and join us. Okay, now we've got some tongs. Just pop the tongs. There you go, we'll use that to cover up my little lodge there. Now we've got our little sausage to go on the barbecue. And I guess depending where you are, some call them kebab, some call them shazlik. We'll just pop that on there. And we'll just hang a couple of spare tools from the handle because you've always got tools hanging off the barbecue. So let's see, we'll put that in there. And the fork. There we go. So now we're going to put it onto a matte card. So I've got a piece of black card here. So I'm just going to use this glue here. So this is a quick dry adhesive glue. But I like this one, especially if you're trying to line something up where you want an even space. This glue's got a bit of wiggle space. Just pop that on. And stick that on there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a border because I want an even border all the way around it. I've got this Nellie's border ruler which I use quite a bit and I want we'll do a five millimeter border. So 
on the back of there it's got a lip so I'm just going to hook that lip onto the edge of my card and trim that off and then we'll do it all the way around so these rulers are also available at Craft Zone. As I said, I'll add the link in the description so you can see what they have there. Okay, and the last one. And here we go. And then we'll attach that to the base card. Some glue on. You can use double sided tape if you prefer. I just like the glue sometimes because it's a bit quick. If I want something to stick straight away, I'll use double sided tape. And there we have it one finished card in 10 minutes. <laughs> so there's the one I did earlier, and that's the one we just did. So you can see there I've added the hill. This one I don't have the hill in it. Just a nice idea, suit great for a mail card, or people are always saying they have trouble getting mail cards. So there's an idea, if you don't have any papers, you can create your own background. Thank you for joining me. Bye.